Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick introduction to using floating point operations in ARM assembly. So in this example, we're going to be using our regular old GitHub repository, uh, cmcmorrow slash CSE 2312. And we're going to go in the examples directory and we're going to be looking at float.s. So float.s is just a, a very simple, basic example of how you use floating point values, uh, basically how you access the floating point unit on the ARM processor. So floating values um, or double values or scalars or whatever, the way that you use them is uh, quite different than how you use regular integer operations with registers. So the floating point unit is a coprocessor. It's a separate processing unit that's within the CPU um, that handles specifically floating point operations. Now the, the tricky part of this is that generally everything that we do on the processor or the majority of the operations we do involve regular old ARM registers. But when we use the floating point coprocessor, we actually have to move things between um, the regular ARM registers and the uh, FPU registers. So the ARM processor has a, as I said, a coprocessor, and that's called the vector floating point unit. So we'll call it the VFP uh, unit for short. So when I refer to a VFP register, I'm talking about the registers that exist on the floating point coprocessor. And when I refer to ARM registers, I'm referring to the registers that are uh, the normal CPU registers that we've used up to this point, like R0 through R14. So um, one of the tricky things about using floating point, in addition to moving things around um, you know, between the two different types of registers, is that our usual scanf and printf functions work a little bit differently. So for example, when we do a printf operation, uh, we would use a percent %f formatting flag, but that value is going to expect actually a double value. So in the ARM floating point unit, in the uh, VFP registers, there are single precision operations and double precision operations, where single, our single precision operations are 32-bit and double precision are 64-bit. So uh, the printf function will work with floating point operations, but when you do the percent %f flag, it expects a 64-bit value. So I'll show you how we deal with that here in a second. But basically, what you need to know about the overall layout of the floating point unit registers is that uh, there are actually four banks of registers, and any of those registers at any given time can be either single or double precision. Now, the trick is that a double precision register is actually occupying two registers worth of space, whereas a single precision register is uh, occupying only one register worth of space. So there's a whole set of floating point operations that you can do that will actually access the floating point unit they're similar to uh, the regular ARM instructions that we have, but there's a special type of syntax. And generally what we're doing is putting a V in front of those. That's for a uh, vector floating point unit. So in other words, most of, the, most of the regular old ARM integer operations are echoed on the floating point unit, but you put the V in front. Now, another thing you, you just notice, and I'll step through the code more in depth here in a second, but you may notice, uh, for example, this .f32 and then a .f64. These are basically format specifiers for the floating point operations that basically tell us uh, which format we want the result to be stored in. So in other words, if we are storing something in a double precision register, we would do the uh, F64 um, flag. If we were storing it in a 32-bit register, we do an F32 and so on. So the first thing we're going to do in this program is basically look over here uh, in the data segment. So this program is going to be very simple. All we're going to do is multiply two floating point values together and print out the result. And the two floating point values we have are going to be constant. So we're going to define those in the data segment. And we do that just like we would any other value uh, from before. So basically, we're going to have val1. We're going to assign that a float. And then uh, we're going to give it a value of 3.14159 pi. And then val2 is also going to be a float, and we're going to assign that a value of 0.1. So when we multiply these together, we'd expect our result to be 0.314159. So assigning the values and declaring those values is very simple. It's very similar to the way that we did it for um, integer operations. But if we move over here to uh, the main function or the main procedure, um, we'll see where things start to get a little bit different. So when we do um, a load register, we're going to basically load the value the same way we did with a uh, single integer oper or with um, integer operation. So basically R0 is going to store the address of val1. And then we're going to do a load register to get that. And we're going to store that in a single precision register on the FPU. So this is where things get different. 
So the LDR instruction is the same. We're going to basically load the address of val1 into register zero or r0. However, we're going to load uh, whatever value is pointed to by r0 into uh, the s register. That's a single precision register. So there's s registers and d registers on the floating point unit. So we want to load this into a single precision or 32-bit valued register in the floating point unit. And we're going to use the LDR instruction, but we're going to have the V in front. This tells it to use the floating point or a vector floating point version of that instruction. So what we're doing here, we do the load register. That gives us the address um, pointed to by val1. Then we're going to do uh, VLDR, which will actually load this value pointed to by now R0. It's going to store that into S0, the single precision register in the floating point unit. So after we do this line, uh, or these two lines, S0 has uh, val1, the actual value, so the 3.14159. Then we're gonna echo, or basically repeat the same thing to load uh, the second value. And we're gonna store that in uh, floating point register S1. So S0 and S1 have val1 and val2 stored in them. So we basically do it the same way. Um, we're gonna reuse R0, we're gonna do VLDR, and we're gonna store it into S1 instead of S0. So we could actually load that into a double precision register by doing a VLDR, but instead of S0 or S1, we would do D0 or D1 or D2 or whatever. So once S0 and S1 are loaded in the, into the floating point registers, we're ready to actually perform the multiplication operation. And we do that using the VMOL instruction. So one thing to notice here is the F32 uh, directive here. That's basically telling us that we want to perform a 32-bit multiplication operation. If instead of S0 and S1, we had D0 and D1 to store double precision values, we could do a uh, .f64 operation in order to perform the 64-bit multiplication. But we're just going to stick with 32-bit. So after this line is complete, it has a syntax similar to any other uh, operation we would perform on integers. Uh, the result is going to be stored here in S2, and then the two operands are going to be in S0 and S1. So after this line uh, is executed, S2 will have the value the result value that we want and then we have to do something that we've never really seen before and that's actually the conversion the printf construction can print floating point numbers but it can only print double precision numbers <clears throat> which is fine because double precision numbers when printed can represent single precision numbers just fine but the tricky part is that we have to actually do a conversion before we issue that number to printf to actually perform the print so since we perform 32-bit uh, arithmetic operations here we need to actually do a conversion from that 32-bit value to 64. And we do that using the vector convert. And what this is saying is vector convert, and we want to store the result in a 64-bit format, and we want to convert a 32-bit value. So in other words, 30, S2 has our 32-bit value, and D4 will have our 64-bit value that we're going to convert up to. So this will actually perform the conversion from S2, and then it'll store the result in a D4. And then we have to do one, one other thing we haven't seen before. The printf instruction expects 64-bit values when it prints a float, but it, is, it expects those to be in regular old ARM 32-bit registers. So we have to actually split that 64-bit value into two different 32-bit registers, regular ARM registers, not uh, floating point registers. And that's what the vmove instruction will do. So vmove um, is a vector move. It works just like the regular move for ARM registers. So we could do... Uh, v move from say S0 to S1 or, or whatever, but we can also move from floating point registers into integer registers or regular ARM registers. So when we do V move and then we give it R1, R2, and D4, we actually have two different destination registers, which is different than any instruction that we've studied up to this point. So R1 and R2 become destination integer registers, and then D4 is a 64 bit or two register wide um, floating point uh, value that we actually want to split up. So this instruction will do the splitting and basically break it up into R1 and R2. At that point, R1 and R2 are arguments to printf just like any other uh, arguments would be when we use printf on integer operations. So in other words, if we had a formatting string that said something like percent %d, percent %d, and then we called printf, it would populate the first percent d with r1 and the second percent d with r2 but if we have just a single percent f it's expecting that to be actually split amongst registers r1 or r2 or r2 or r3 depending on the order in which you give the uh, instructions there so in our formatting string that we're going to print 
we have multiplication result equals percent F. So this is our floating point formatting flag. And then when we do the V move R1, R2, D4, that will split D4 into R1 and R2. Then when we call printf, uh, it'll basically print that as one single 64-bit value. And then we branch to exit. So at this point, uh, everything will have been printed, the result would have been, <coughs> will have been com computed, and everything will be good. So let's go ahead and run this example. So the example we're looking at was float.s. So I'll go ahead and compile or assemble, and then we will print the result. Since the first value was pi, 3.14159, and then we multiplied it by 0.1, we got 0.314159, which is correct. So I hope this example is useful. Um, floating point numbers are actually, uh, they can get quite complicated. So in later videos, I'll start talking about um, some of the more uh, advanced vector formats where you can actually do several different floating point operations at once for performance reasons. Uh, but this is just a very simple um, introduction to uh, basically floating point operations and using the floating point unit. So uh, like this video, um, if it was helpful, subscribe, comment down below, and uh, thank you, and I'll see you again.